Madden, the high school football game of the week. Brought to you in part by Ramey Chevrolet, steering you straight. By Hardy's Restaurants, where we're out to win you over. And by Mullins Ford, your four-wheel drive headquarters in Richlands, Virginia. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next week when the Bluefield Beavers take on the Princeton Tigers at Mitchell Stadium in Blue. The following is a WBBA sports special. Field Beavers take on the Princeton Tigers at Mitchell Stadium. Today's game is brought to you in part by Ramey Chevrolet. We're steering you straight. By Hardy's Restaurant, where we're out to win you over. And by Mullins Ford, your four-wheel drive headquarters in Richlands, Virginia. Mitchell Stadium in Bluefield, the site of so many historic football games. And tonight, it's not just a typical gridiron matchup. Call it a war, a heated rivalry, but nothing describes it better than a good old-fashioned backyard brawl as the Bluefield Beavers meet the Princeton Tigers. Hello, everybody. I'm Pat Purcell, and welcome to the high school football game of the week here on WVVA-TV. Tonight, the Battle of Mercer County as Bluefield hooks up with Princeton. Our color commentator tonight, he's been around Mercer County for 33 years, Mark Sarver. And Mark, throw away the statistics, the records. This is a war. It certainly is, Pat. When these two get together, you're always going to have a real fine football game regardless of record. What where do you feel is uh, it pumps these teams up so much? It seems like year after year, no matter what the record, they just come out ready to, to hit hard. They've been playing football, Pat, since uh, early in the 1920s, and they're the only AAA high schools in the county right now. And uh, the two cities have always been rivals, and so uh, when you put those factors together, you'll always have a good football game. The records tonight, Bluefield enters this contest with a record of 4-3. While Princeton is two and four, interesting enough for Princeton, they are a senior-dominated team, but yet they've had all kinds of problems. They sure have, Pat. I was speaking to uh, Coach Dave Bell before the game, and uh, he indicated to me that they were a senior-dominated team, but their seniors had very little experience, and they only have seven sophomores on their squad this year, so uh, things haven't been going too good for the Tigers. But for Bluefield, a lot of people are asking, what is wrong with the Bluefield Beavers at 4-3? and three? I know the community has been saying, where does the problem lie? Everyone is asking that question, but really, there is no problem. This team has performed well all season. I think they've done a real good job this year. They've had a pretty tough schedule. Uh, they lost a real uh, hard fall ball game up at Greenbrier East earlier in the year and uh, they had a real heartbreaker against Stonewall Jackson a real close game at Beckley that they lost so out of their three losses really uh, two of them could have gone the other way which could have made it for a real good season players to watch tonight for Princeton Rodney Scott the fullback you talk about a horse man that guy can move he's a big boy Bluefield will have a hard time stopping him what will they have to do to slow him down at fullback you know that's one thing he seems to do you think you've got him at the line of scrimmage but he pulls ahead for four and five yards Bluefield will have to make sure they're tackling well tonight. Uh, he's not the type of back that you can uh, arm tackle. They'll have to really do a good job of support defensively. Now the players to watch for Bluefield, about four or five of them, you just don't know who's going to break the big one. First of all, quarterback Stacy Carter, perhaps the best quarterback around the two Virginias. Carter's had a real good year. In fact, he's, he's been a real good quarterback for the past two years, Pat. And uh, 
He's a real, he, he's, he's a real good quarterback. As far as Princeton is concerned, they say really what they must do is stop number 42, Charlie Thompson. We saw him last week against Mountview on the game of the week. He's explosive. Charlie is a very versatile performer for Bluefield. He can not only run it, but he can catch it. Uh, in fact, he can throw the ball well. So he's a triple threat anytime he's on the field offensively. Interesting enough now for Princeton, no real experience at quarterback. They've got a senior, Terry, starting tonight. They've lost self to an injury. That could pose some problems. It sure could. In fact, they really didn't have any experience experience in with Aaron Self since he is a sophomore and uh, Terry has not played that much this year so uh, you know who knows both teams out of the playoff picture again Bluefield with a record of four and three while Princeton two and four kind of rare I guess for this kind of heated rivalry pride only really is on the line pride um, Pat definitely as you said neither one of them are in the playoff picture this particular this particular year right now and uh, they are playing for pride what does it mean to both teams? You know, having talked to both coaches, I know you had a chance to visit with both right. of them. What do they say? What would a win do for both teams? You know, it seems like it would really pump up the communities more than anything. Sure, Princeton has a very difficult schedule ahead of them. Games left with uh, Beckley, Logan, and I believe Greenbrier East. And a game like this could really set the tone for a successful finish. For Bluefield, uh, they are 4-3 and three if they can get a good win here and then get a win over Logan and East Bank. 7-3 and three is not a bad year. Last week, Bluefield, 370 yards total offense against the Mountain View Golden Knights. What will be the key for Princeton? I guess more than anything, it's shut down an explosive wishbone attack. Right. Bluefield did have a good wishbone attack last week at Mountain View. They didn't throw the ball that much, so obviously Princeton's going to have to defense the run, which might open up the air for Bluefield. And for Princeton, what must they do? Offensively, Princeton's going to have to control the ball and keep Bluefield's offense off the field. In order to control the ball, uh, Scott's going to have to be a big factor. The Battle of Mercer County, the good old-fashioned backyard brawl as the Princeton Tigers meet the Bluefield Beavers back with the opening kickoff in a moment. Welcome back to the high school football game of the week here on WVBA-TV. Again tonight from Mitchell Stadium, the Battle of Mercer County as the Bluefield Beavers in maroon take on the Princeton Tigers in their away white jerseys. Again, Pat Frizzell with Mark Sorver. And we're glad you joined us for the high school football game of the week on WVBA-TV. The Bluefield Beavers set to kick off with Mike Shoda. The Beavers lead this series 40 wins against 17 losses, and there have been two ties, and Shota's kick is away. Will be fielded back at the 10-yard line, and the Princeton return out to the 22. So that's where the Tigers will start first and 10. Mark Trail on the return. The Beavers looking for their fifth win of the season, while Princeton hoping to improve to three and four. Joe Tribuco and company. The Tigers in white, starting at quarterback, Steve Terry, the senior. And they've got a full house backfield with Scott and Bailey. And they give it that time to Bailey, and he's out to the 25, a pickup of three yards. Second down and a long six now for Princeton. And they jump off sides, and that'll back them up five. Coach Joe Tribuco said a win tonight would basically have Princeton walking away with a great deal of pride and hanging their heads up high. And a little end around that time. Pickup of two yards. That's going to bring up a third down now for Princeton. Oh, so important anytime you get a big rivalry like this is mistakes will kill you early in the ball game and the momentum can swing early. Out of the eye formation on a third down and nine now. They give it to Scott. And he's not going to get the first down. It's going to be six yards short. And for the first time tonight, we will see the Princeton punting unit. Field position, how it is so important in high school football. A lot of times field position can actually uh, win and lose a game pad in high school football because sometimes an offense um, will not get many chances during the course of a uh, half. Dana Martin back at the 12 yard line to get the punt away for Princeton and it is a short kick. We'll hit at the 37, roll out of bounds at the 41 and we talk about field position. Look at Bluefield. 
only 41 yards from the goal line. Right, going back to field position, Pat, I think a lot of times it's uh, better in a real uh, a contest where both teams are pumped up to possibly play defense first. And uh, Bluefield did drive them back with a good kickoff, played a good defensive series, and now they have excellent field position. They're almost in four down territory already. Coach Joe Tribuco said the biggest threat tonight, they're going to have to stop Charlie Thompson and Stacy Carter shut them down early. You will see a great deal of what you're looking at right now for Bluefield, and that is the wishbone attack. And they hand it off that time to Scott. He'll pick up three yards inside the 40 to the 38. Princeton really has their hand full, hands full tonight. Um, Bluefield has a very multiple offense. They have a lot of people who are capable of running the ball and uh, catching it. They have an excellent quarterback to get it to them. The wishbone attack, how we've seen it so successfully executed at Air Force in Oklahoma. And in fact, that's what Fred Simon said before the game. He says uh, you're going to see a great deal of that very explosive wishbone attack throughout the game. Again, the Beavers out of the wishbone. However, Carter will throw the ball down the right side. He's got Floyd Ray. Touchdown, Bluefield. Right, Pat, they really caught them defensively that time looking for the wishbone. And uh, Ray was out on the wing and basically just outran the coverage. Princeton was in zone coverage on that particular play. Stacy Carter goes up top, 38 yards to Floyd Ray as the Beavers get on the board with 9.18 to play in the first quarter, leading this one six to nothing. Mike Schota on to get the extra point away now for the Beavers. And they'll fake it, Schota will roll around to his right, wants to throw it, goes into the end zone for the two point conversion. You know, last week, Pat, I think that we, uh, Bluefield missed a couple of extra point attempts down at Mountain View, so maybe that wasn't such a bad play. Well, following the clip, that'll back them up 15, so now it's a field goal attempt. Let's call it a 32 yards. Showed his kick is away, and it is no good. And the kick is no good. He had enough leg, it was just off to the right. Well, we've got a moment. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on instant replay and go ahead and get your description of that last touchdown as Stacy Carter goes up top to Floyd Ray. Okay, Carter uh, fakes the ball into the middle, and again, Ray is uh, set on the right side, just runs a straight-up pattern down the field, and uh, Carter throws a beautiful ball to him, Pat. And again, I think Princeton was definitely looking run after uh, Bluefield had been so successful last week with their wishbone offense. Mike Schota set to tee it up now for the Beavers. And a short kick will be fielded. The ball is fumbled at the 26. However, Mark Trail pounces on it. And oh, how that could have been a turn of events there. If he would have fumbled that football, Bluefield recovers and you send that wishbone attack back onto the field. And one, two, three, they're back in the end zone if you're not careful. You're right, Pat. Uh, Scoreboard would have been lighting up all night if that had occurred just then. What must Princeton do now to pick up some momentum here? That's something they, they can't do is get down on themselves. No, Princeton right now has to at least get a first down out of this and run a little bit of time off the clock and keep Bluefield's explosive offense off the field. The backfield, Rodney Scott and Todd Bailey, they give it to Bailey and he's out across the 30 to the 33. Princeton's doing a real good job of blocking along the offensive line. Even in, even in the last series, they did a good job, Pat. Our officials tonight, they come out of Charleston. Steve Grayley, Don Burton, Kurt Galloway, Fred McPherson, and John Brown. Three of them out of Charleston, one from Dunbar, and one from Scott Depot. Out of the eye formation. Again, there's Bailey out across the 40, still going to the 42, and he will have a Princeton first down. Once again, their offensive line is doing a very good job, and Bluefield is in a 5-3 defensively. I think Princeton's catching their linebackers uh, jumping a little bit right now. You know, I talked to the officials before the game, and they talked about the rivalries in high school football. They, this crew is used to calling in Charleston. They claim they're used to only seeing three, maybe 4,000 fans per game. They claim that this game here will be the biggest game they've called all year because of the rivalry and the 
And of course the crowd, they give it to Scott and he's hit immediately by Joe Street. It's a great defensive effort by the Bluefield team. There is a penalty on the play. And it looks like that's going to perhaps go against Bluefield for piling on. A little bit of too much physical activity by the Beavers. A little too much enthusiasm, I believe, up to that point. Well, following the late hit by Bluefield, that will give Princeton a first and 10 on the Bluefield 47 yard line. Trailing in this ball game, six to nothing. And there's Bailey to the 43 of Bluefield. He'll pick up four, maybe five. Second down now for Princeton with three-man backfield. Again, there's Bailey. And he'll carry the ball to the Bluefield 39. Interesting, we're seeing Todd Bailey carrying the football. The tailback, we expected to see perhaps a little bit more of Rodney Scott early in the game. Maybe Trebuco trying to mix things up just a bit. Right, I believe he is. Uh, Bluefield's linebackers, in fact, that time defensively, they switched over to a 4-4. And uh, Bluefield's linebackers evidently are keen on Scott, which is leaving Bailey with a lot of running room. Third down, a long two now for Princeton with 7.03 to play in the first quarter. There again is Bailey, and he's going to be very close to the first down. It looks like his second effort will give him the first down. I think we have another penalty on the play also, Pat. Well, that'll bring him up 15 more yards on the face mask call, and perhaps Bluefield a little over anxious in a big ball game like this and getting him just a little bit carried away. They sure are. First down and 10, the ball resting on the Bluefield 20. Terry will drop back to throw it. It is incomplete. It was good coverage in the secondary by Bluefield. They were in zone coverage that time, and they did a real good job. Sign of a good team, though, is the squad who can come right back and march to the length of the field and, and get something on the scoreboard to tighten this thing up with 638 to play in the first quarter here from Mitchell Stadium. We're glad you joined us on the high school football game of the week here on WVBA-TV. The draw play to Rodney Scott. He's inside the 15 to the 12. He'll be about a yard short of the first down, and look out, here come the Tigers. They're in four uh, down territory right now, so they're going to have a real, uh, let's see, I believe it's going to be about third and two. Joe Tribuco said before the game, the key offensively will be to have sustained drives and keep the ball out of Bluefield's hands. So a good point you brought up is being able to keep that explosive offense of Bluefield off the field. They've been able to do it uh, this particular series. And again, Pat, it was really crucial that they did with Bluefield scoring as quickly uh, as they did on their first offensive series. And uh, Princeton has really come back and done a good job on this drive, aided by the Beavers' penalties. Tribuco did say that they would try to basically keep it simple, just run the football throughout the evening. Third down and a long one now for Princeton. And there's Bailey, and he's inside the 10 to the eight yard line. And they have really been impressive on this drive, moving the ball right through a very big and physical Bluefield defense. They average roughly 210 pounds up front. Bluefield does have a big defense. They have a quick defense also, and Princeton's done a real good job off of the right side of Bluefield's defense. First down and goal now for Princeton, and Terry will keep it on the quarterback sneak to the four. Some observations defensively. Uh, perhaps you had said uh, in the break there that maybe just a little bit too much stunning by the Beavers. The Beavers have been sending two linebackers, it appears, on most plays uh, with Scott, Princeton's excellent fullback. And uh, he's been doing a good job of not only carrying out the fake, but also of blocking. Second down and goal at the five. There's Bailey around the left side. Touchdown, Princeton. It's a beautiful play, Pat, by the Tigers. A very impressive drive. Very impressive drive. Bluefield is going to have to make some uh, adjustments defensively. Well, hello, hello. Todd Bailey goes in from five yards out to tie the game with 5.09 to play in the first quarter. And this appears like it will be a very high scoring game. And the kick is away. And it is good right down the center. Once again, Pat, anytime these two teams get together, you can throw out the record books. Uh, Princeton again is a 
team coming in to tonight's contest that has not had a good season. They had every reason uh, after Bluefield's uh, quick touchdown to really fall down dead, but came back with a really good ball controlled drive. And let's go ahead and take a look at it there as uh, Todd Bailey just basically untouched goes into the end zone. He did, Pat. Bluefield's got to do something defensively again. Uh, whether they're keen on Scott or not, uh, it appears that they are at this point, which is leaving Bailey with a lot of running room. Princeton does have a senior-dominated offense, and even though we have said they do not have a lot of experience, uh, they are seniors and they did an excellent job. The quarterback, who hasn't had a lot of uh, time this year, uh, did a really good job on that particular drive. And Kerry Rucker set to tee it up at the 40. Kick is away. It will be fielded at the 30. And there's Mike Mustard out to the 37. And there's Charlie Thompson out across the 45, out to the midfield stripe. The official, however, is going to mark him out of bounds at the 49. Going back to the series between the two schools, Pat, uh, what's interesting to note is that Princeton's um, three wins since 1958 have all come at Mitchell Stadium. They have not had a home win over Bluefield uh, on a, their home field uh, since before 1958. So uh, maybe their luck will continue tonight. And following the Thompson run, that will be a first down and 10, the ball at the 49. And there's Scott around the left side, out across the midfield stripe, brought down at the Princeton 49. You know, this series, well, this is kind of strange. Between 1966 and 1969, they decided, forget it, we're not gonna play football. They sure did, Pat, I believe, um, at that time. There was a lot of animosity. Um, relationship between the two towns and between the two schools was not very friendly. And uh, the people in power decided that it would be better not to play for a few years and have a cooling off period, which has uh, worked out real well. Second down and eight. Thompson in motion. They give to Thompson, and he'll be brought down at the 46. Well, I'd imagine it was just as, just as well for Princeton because during the era of the 60s, they only scored a touchdown. Some of the scores, 53 to nothing in 1960, 80 to seven. In 1961, not a misprint. In 1962, 27 nothing, 63, 38 nothing. And it goes on and on. Right, Pat, Princeton only came out of that particular decade with seven points offensively. <laughs> so the uh, 60s were not very kind to them. You would think Princeton persuaded whoever made that decision to call that series <laughs> off for a few years, huh? Quite possibly. <laughs> Princeton did jo enjoy a lot of success during that period of time uh, on the hardwood floor with Bluefield, however. Third down, a long four now for Bluefield on their second drive of the evening. They give to the fullback, Kelly. Appears to be about a half a yard short of the first down. It's going to be very close, however. All right, Bluefield is in four down territory, so I'm sure if they're a little bit short, they'll go for it at this point. Bluefield a half yard short of the first down, and they will gamble. Go for it. Fourth down and about six inches, actually, on the Princeton 41. Carter, no surprise, little quarterback sneak, and he will have the first down with two minutes, 50 seconds to play in the first quarter. In case you're just joining us, Bluefield struck on a 38-yard pass from Stacy Carter to Floyd Ray. That would be the first score of the game. And then Princeton came right back as Todd Bailey put the Tigers out on top, seven to six, as he went five yards around the left side for the touchdown. And that is where we stand. The Princeton Tigers leading their rivals, the Bluefield Beavers, in the Battle of Mercer County, seven to six. 
Carter will look down the right side to Floyd Ray, and he's got him again at the 22-yard line of Princeton, and that will be another Beaver first down. I talked to uh, Princeton's defensive coordinator before the game, uh, Dave Bell, and he said they would be operating defensively out of a multiple 40 most of the game, and uh, they have defensed the wishbone up to this point fairly well, but uh, Blue Field's receivers are wide open up to this point, Pat. I look, to Blue, I look for a Bluefield to throw a little bit more. Well, I'm sure they're concentrating a great deal on that wishbone attack, perhaps just a little bit too much. And as you can see, they can break the big one at any moment. There's Scott inside the 20, brought down at the 15, be about a yard short of the first down. Carter did a good job on that play. He made a real good pitch to uh, Scott after he had made the uh, defensive end commit himself. So many teams, especially at the college level, you see them run the wishbone so successfully, but they cannot pass the football. But, you know, if you combine the two, that can really uh, pose some major problems for a defensive squad. Not knowing exactly what to key on at what particular time. Second down and one now for Bluefield. And there's Thompson inside the 10. He'll have the first down to the Princeton 8. Going back to what you just said, Pat, uh, the Air Force Academy this year is running a combination of the wishbone and the run and shoot, which is a real strange combination uh, offensively. And Bluefield did start out the year not running the wishbone nearly as much as they are at this time of the year. So uh, earlier in the year, they were a passing team, and uh, they did it fairly successfully. So right now it appears they have a real good combination of the run and the pass available to them. 370 yards offense last week on our game of the week with the Mountain View Golden Knights. Bluefield won that one, 34-28 in overtime. There's Carter inside the five, and he is brought down just inches short of the goal line. Second down and goal now for Bluefield, and perhaps we will see Stacy Carter here with a very simply just keeping the ball on the quarterback sneak, keeping it simple. And there is the quarterback sneak, Carter. Still no call yet by the official, and he has stopped. Well, he can't be more than just a couple inches short of that goal line, bringing up now a third down. It was a good call by Coach Frizzell on that one. He had that all the way. I don't think Bluefield will do anything fancy down, at the, uh, down this close to the goal. That's one reason that the wishbone, of course, being the high-risk offense that it is, a lot of times they will, when they have the ball inside the five, just keep it very basic. Right. I think you'll see either the fullback or... And that is the end of our first quarter here from Mitchell Stadium in Bluefield on our high school football game of the week on WVBA-TV, where the Princeton Tigers lead the Bluefield Beavers 7-6 back with the second quarter in a moment. Second quarter, Bluefield on a third down and goal at the half yard line. They give it to Scott, touchdown, but a flag goes down. Stacy Carter will run the option to the left side, pitch it to Scott at the last moment. Touchdown. Third down and five. Third and goal. Stacy Carter pitches it out to Ronnie Scott, and that was a foot race to the corner of the end zone. It sure was, Pat. The penalty kind of worked against the Tigers on that uh, particular series. It gave Bluefield a little bit of room to operate with, and Bluefield does have a very uh, quick team offensively, which opened up the option for them. The Beavers will go for two now, leading 12 to seven. They fake it inside, they pitch it outside to Thompson, and he's in for the two-point conversion. Charlie Thompson goes in for a pair, giving Bluefield a lead of 14 to seven. It's beginning to look more and more like Bluefield versus Mount View all the time. 
It is, Pat. Uh, again, Bluefield just had a little bit too much speed right there for Princeton defensively. We saw it on the touchdown run by Ronnie Scott uh, to the left side of the field, and we saw it again uh, with Charlie Thompson on the option to the right side of the field. Well, we've got a moment. Let's go ahead and take a look at it again as uh, Scott just snuck his way in from five yards out on the right. touchdown. He sure did. Uh, again, Bluefield had a procedure penalty on the play before that, which backed them up five yards, gave them a little bit of room to work with. Uh, they had the wide side of the field open, and um, as you can see it, Scott took the pitch from Carter and simply outraced the Tigers into the end zone. 11.51 to play in the first half. Bluefield comes right back to take the lead, 14 to seven. Seesaw battle, showed his kick. It fairly deep and will be fielded back at the 10. Good return out to the 32, and that's Todd Bailey on the return. Eye formation this time for Princeton. Bluefield with a 4-3 defense. There's Rodney Scott. Across the 41, the ball is loose. However, the official is going to say that he was down on the play. That'll make it a third down and three. Again, a lot of people have asked, what is wrong with Bluefield? They came into the season, a lot of people said this would be the best team ever at Bluefield High School. They enter tonight's game with a record of four and three. Talking to Coach Simon, he says that, yes, there's been some comments made by the community, but basically the loyal supporters have backed this program and they will continue to do so, and that's exactly what the high school programs need around the two Virginias. And there again is Rodney Scott, and he will have the first down out to the 46. Bluefield had a lot of skilled, skilled people returning, Pat, uh, along the offensive line, which is so important, and of course the defensive line, they had lost several key players. And uh, although they had people to fill those positions, people who looked good on paper, they had not been, you know, in a game situation. And uh, with uh, Coach Simon's situation in Bluefield right now, I'm sure that Coach Trebuco is going through a similar uh, situation in Princeton, as is possibly Coach uh, David Litz down at Taswell. Often people underestimate the pressure of high school football coaching, but uh, especially in the small town atmosphere, there is a great deal of pressure. First down and 10. And that time, Terry will be brought down immediately. In fact, he's going to lose a couple yards back to the 43. Second down and 13. And Terry will put the ball up in the air. He goes deep over the middle, but it's just overthrown. Bluefield did a real good job on coverage defensively on that particular play. Yeah, they had Kerry Rucker out there, and it would have been thrown not quite so far, and then Rucker could have come up with that, and it would have been a race to the end zone. Uh, Terry's got a strong arm, Princeton's quarterback. And again, he is a senior, but he hasn't played much this year. Aaron Self, who is uh, their sophomore signal caller, is out of action tonight. Third down and 13, and a flag goes down. Well, following the Princeton turnover, Bluefield will now take over, and they give it to the tailback that time, Mike Kelly. He'll pick up a yard. Second down and a long nine now for Bluefield. Leading in this one again, 14 to seven over their rivals, the Princeton Tigers. Carter throws the ball, he's got Charlie Thompson. Thompson's inside the 30, run out of bounds at the 29. He will have a Beaver first down. Stacy Carter, not only can he run the ball, but pass it. As Bluefield does throw the ball more and more, it will uh, open up their running attack even that much more. So Princeton's gonna have to make some adjustments defensively right now to contain Bluefield. Mike Kelly picks up three yards, which brings up a second down and long, let's call it seven. Seven minutes to play in the first half with Bluefield leading Princeton 14 to seven on our high school football game of the week here on WBBA TV. Charlie Thompson, he's outside. Thompson's at the 10, touchdown! Bluefield had excellent 
excellent blocking at the point of attack, uh, Pat, and Princeton was looking for the pitch. Bluefield handed it off inside to uh, Charlie Thompson, and he simply outran the Tigers secondary. Seven minutes to 19 seconds to play in the first half. Charlie Thompson goes 19 yards for the touchdown. As that Bluefield offense really beginning to perhaps wear down the Princeton D. There's Mike Shota's kick, and it is good. Well, we've got a chance to take a look at it, and we talked about Joe Tribuco's biggest nightmare, having talked to him before the game, and he says, we've got to stop Charlie Thompson. And as we can see, that's one problem that he obviously dreamed about last night because he knew it was about to happen, and Thompson chose his speed. He sure did. Uh, in this offensive series, we saw Thompson not only catch the ball, but again, we saw him run the ball. He's a very versatile performer, Pat, and uh, teams have a real hard time stopping him. Mike Schott is set to get the kick away now for Bluefield. Todd Bailey, the deep man for the Tigers. And the ball will hit at the 12 and go into the end zone, which will set up a first and 10 at the 20 now for Princeton. They pitch it back to the lone back, Rodney Scott, out across the 45 to the 47. Be two yards short of the first down. Second down and three. And again, there's Rodney Scott out across the midfield stripe. Still going inside the Bluefield 45. Still going all the way to the Bluefield 40-yard line. And that's like a truck out there, an 18-wheeler. <laughs> I tell you, it's hard to bring him down. Again, in the pregame show, we talked about Bluefield not being able to arm tackle Rodney Scott. Uh, they would have to have a lot of support from a lot of people, and they got it on that particular play, but Scott was strong enough to carry most of the defense with him. Well, he's a horse, I'll tell you. He carried about six defenders with him. Pat Frizzell with Mark Sarver on our high school game of the week. In case you're just joining us once again, Bluefield leads us 121 to 7 over Princeton. And there's Bailey. We haven't seen him in... The last few drives, and that time he's out to the 33. Be a couple yards short of the first down. So again, they're trying to mix it up just a bit. Rod, Scott, and uh, that time to Bailey. They are mixing it up, Pat, and they've done what they had to do. Uh, they were they're down by 14 points. They've come out with a good offensive drive, taking some time off the clock. If they can get a score out of this, they're right back in the ball game. The ball resting on the Bluefield 34. And Scott appears to be about a yard and a half short of the first down, bringing up a third down situation. Well, next week on the game of the week, for the first time ever, we head on into Athens to watch the Concord Mountain Lions meet Glenville State. It's never been done before on the high school game of the week, and we will certainly be proud to bring the viewers at ball game. College football next week on the game of the week here on WVVA TV, Concord hosting Glenville State. There's Rodney Scott down the left side inside the 10. And touchdown, Princeton. It's a beautiful run, Pat. Again, they're running off of Bluefield's left side defensively. We talked about him in the pregame show, the keys for Bluefield. They claim they had to shut down Scott, and you can see why as he scampered some 35 yards for the touchdown. Kerry Rucker on to attempt the extra point now for Princeton, trying to cut it to 21-14, and he missed it. What's interesting, Pat, is that in uh, Princeton's first offensive drive and even in the first quarter, they did not feature Ronnie Scott, uh, Rodney Scott that much. And uh, they were running Bailey quite a bit. Bluefield was keen on Scott, which left Bailey open. Uh, now, Bluefield seems to have forgotten a little bit about Scott, and he just uh, made his presence known again very quickly. Beautiful run. Let's take a look at it. Now, Rodney Scott uh, shows us why he's 
one of the toughest backs to bring down across southern West Virginia. Yeah, again, Pat, it was an unbalanced line to the left. Scott took the hand off, veered off to the left, and uh, ran in into the end zone untouched. We saw overtime last week as Mountview lost to Bluefield 34 to 28, and this uh, it's got everything perhaps plus some. Uh, as last week's game was an exciting one indeed, and this one already, we've got 34 points in the ball game scored, and we're still only in the second quarter. An onside kick that time, and it will bounce 10 yards. Princeton bounces on it, and the Tigers have the football. The ball did bounce 10 yards. The official says Princeton football. Two things, Pat. It took a lot of guts to call that by Coach Joe Trebuco. Uh, and second of all, it was a poorly executed onside kick, but Bluefield did not react to it. Expect the unexpected in a heated rivalry, I guess, the backyard brawl. As Princeton pulls the onside kick, and I don't think anyone in the whole house thought that Princeton would pull that stunt early in the game. They do, they pick up the ball on the 50, and now Terry decides to air it out. He'll go deep with it. He's got tops in, but he drops the ball, had it, and a flag goes down, and it appears we're going to have interference. The lone back is Scott. They'll fake the Scott throw over the middle. And the pass is complete out inside Bluefield territory to the 42-yard line. You mentioned it earlier, Pat. Princeton on their last drive did a real good job of mixing up their plays. And once again, they did a good job on that. Bluefield expecting Scott to get the ball. I believe that's Terry's first pass completion of the evening. Pickup of 23 yards to David Johnson. Bringing up a third down and only two yards for the first. There's the money back Scott. He'll have the first down for Princeton. To the 35. Second down and three now for Princeton trailing in this ball game 21 to 13 on our high school game of the week on WBBA TV. There's Bailey. He'll have the first down, so Princeton again just grinding it out. Joe Tribuco told us before the game that's what they would need to do to win this ball game is to have sustained drives. That's exactly what they've done. They've done it successfully. Ball control was the key for Princeton, uh, not only to get offensive points on the board, but also to keep Bluefield's explosive offense off of the field, Pat. Three minutes to play in the first half with Princeton threatening once again. Rodney Scott inside to the 21. He'll pick up three. Really nothing to lose here going for it on fourth down. They've got a lone back. Rodney Scott, they give it to Scott. And he's going to be brought down five yards short of the first. So Whatever. Bluefield will take over. Third down and a long nine now for the Beavers with a minute to play in the first half. And that time, pickup of five yards. Beavers are going to be four yards short of the first. They give it to Ronnie Scott, and Princeton will call timeout. Aaron Self, the deep man for Princeton, standing back at his 32. And a booming kick by Shota all the way inside the 20. It will go all the way to the six yard line. A kick of 54 yards by Mike Shota. And that is the final play of the first half and it has been a dandy from Mitchell Stadium. You do not want to miss the second half. It will probably be just as good if not better. Another scoring marathon on the high school game of the week as the Princeton Tigers trail the Bluefield Beavers 21 to 13. Back with our halftime show in a moment. And welcome back to the high school football game of the week here on WVBA TV. We are at halftime where the Bluefield Beavers lead the Princeton Tigers 21 to 13. And now let's go down to the field for the sights and the sounds of the Bluefield High School Marching Band.
Again, we are at halftime with the Bluefield Beavers lead the Princeton Tigers 21 to 13. When we come back, more high school football here on WBVA TV with a second half action. here in the second half. They give it to Thompson. Pulls his way out across the 42. He'll pick up five. I'm sure Coach Trebuco would like to come out and begin the second half with a real good defensive effort and stop the Beavers. In particular, Charlie Thompson. Again, you've mentioned it before. He has an ability to run with the ball. He can catch it. He can return kicks, return punts, and does a very good job defensively. He's an all-around excellent performer. Second down and four now for the Beavers. And they'll throw this time to Floyd Ray, and it's incomplete. Had him out at the Princeton 45 and led him just a little bit too much. And there's the razzle-dazzle. They give it to Thompson. Thompson to Floyd Ray. Ray around the left side. Out across the 48. Across midfield where he will be stacked up. He'll have the first down. And now Fred Simon decides to come out with a bag of tricks here in the second half. Again, Bluefield out of the wishbone offense with a first down on the Princeton 49. An option to the right side. There's Thompson. And there's that speed we talked about inside the Princeton 35. Run out of bounds at the 34. Princeton did a really, really good job of defending the quarterback, Carter, on that play, but he made an excellent pitch to Thompson. And as you said, Thompson showed excellent speed in simply outrunning the Tiger defense. Another first down for Bluefield, beginning to grind it out here to start our second half, and that's something that I'm sure Joe Trebuca wanted to do, and that stopped Princeton, uh, rather Bluefield, right off the bat in the second half, get the ball back and get good field position, but it's not going to happen. Bluefield moving the ball on their first possession of the second half. They pitch it to Scott. Scott tries to get loose, but he's stopped at the 30. He'll pick up a couple. Princeton did an excellent job that time of defense in the wishbone. They shut off the quarterback, Carter. They uh, had a defender on the uh, tailback, Scott. It was an excellent job, Pat. One thing we should point out is that on Bluefield's 21 points in the first half, which again is a lot of points, they came very quickly. We didn't see Bluefield really uh, have many established drives and uh, they did not eat up a lot of time on the clock offensively, which right now they are doing. 9.35 to play in the third quarter. Carter throws it down the left side, and he overthrows Ray at the 10. He was open. That's about the uh, only really bad ball Carter's thrown all evening. They're breaking out of the wishbone on this play. They have Charlie Thompson in the slot to the right side. And we will see a pass as Carter rolls to his right. And he'll throw it down the right side. Again, intended for Floyd Ray. It's incomplete. Now fourth down. And I hardly think we'll see Mike Schroeder tee one up for 40 yards here. That would be a 50-yard field goal attempt. No, but I do think we'll see Bluefield go for it. That'll be a fourth down and six. And the Beavers will go for it. Leading in this ball game, 21 to 13 in the Battle of Mercer County. The Beavers holding on to an eight-point lead over Princeton. Carter, a deep drop. He's in trouble. Tries to scramble, but he's going to be dropped. The loss of two yards, and the Princeton defense rises to the occasion, and they stop Bluefield. They did an excellent job on that particular play. Bailey, and Bailey will be hit at the 30, 
46. He'll pick up six yards. Something Bluefield does not want to do is what they did in the first half, and that's make those mistakes. It's cost them 45 yards and penalties on those personal fouls in the first half. Right. Princeton on their first scoring drive uh, benefited from two 15-yard penalties, and on their uh, second scoring drive, they also benefited from one 15-yard penalty, Pat. Those were crucial mistakes that the Beavers committed. Second down and three. Steve Terry no longer in at quarterback. And that time, Self will hand the ball off inside to Bailey. And he appears to have the first down. If not, he's going to be just short. As you just mentioned, Pat, they have put Aaron Self in at quarterback. He's been their starter all year. He's a sophomore. I don't know if there's anything wrong with uh, Steve Terry or if they're just giving Aaron Self a, uh, an opportunity to get some points on the board for the Tigers. Third down and a half a yard now for Princeton. Out of the eye formation. Bluefield with a five-man defensive front, and it would appear that the Tigers will have it by a yard, and they do. Princeton's done exactly what, you, what I'm sure Coach Trebuco wanted them to do to start out the second half. Pat, they've stopped Bluefield offensively, and they've come out together so far. One first down on this offensive drive. First and 10. Princeton with the ball on their own, 42. And there's Scott picking up six. Second down and five. The lone back is Scott. They give it to Scott, and he will be very close to another Princeton first down. I believe he does have a first down. Bobby Scott's ball carrier once again. Back on the play by Ronald Burris. I'm out for Which would put Princeton in Bluefield's territory. the first down, so Princeton, if they could move the ball on into the end zone, we would really have a dandy with Bluefield leading it 21 to 13. Of course, we've already got a great game on our hands here. Only a touchdown and a two-point conversion separating Bluefield and Princeton at this time with 6.44 to play in the third quarter. Rodney Scott straight ahead, picking up four. Now we're beginning to see that importance of the first down where you grind out four and five yards and how that can really make a difference when it comes down to second down situations and second short. Bluefield's got to do something defensively to stop Princeton. They're getting three and four yards, uh, five yards at the crack right now. And again, as you said, a lot of it's coming on first down, which really makes your play calling that much easier. Out of the eye formation, and there's Scott straight ahead. He's got some open room all the way inside the 20, but he fumbles the football. Can't tell who's recovered, Pat. Bluefield has pounced on it. And, oh, that's a backbreaker, because Princeton would have had the football on the Bluefield 15-yard line. But under six minutes to play in the third quarter, and Bluefield following the... Scott turnover will have the ball first and 10 on their own 15, and there's the other Scott going to the left side, picking up 13 yards. Following the Princeton timeout, Bluefield will have the ball first and 10 on their 29-yard line. Straight ahead to the fullback. That's Kelly inside the 30, and he'll be dropped all the way at the 20-yard line. That's one aspect of the uh, wishbone that Bluefield has not used very much tonight. Pat. They haven't used the fullback very much. But again, that was an excellent call and a very good run. It's 5:25 to play in the third quarter, leading Princeton 21 to 13 on our high school football game of the week here on WBVA TV. And there's Scott picking up four. Things can change very quickly. Several minutes ago, Princeton was moving the ball, about ready to score. And uh, now Bluefield's back knocking on Princeton's door. Possibility of a letdown uh, for Bluefield after their 
overtime win last week over Mountview. And according to Coach Simon, he says, there is no letdown. Anytime you play Princeton, you're not going to get let down. You're just going to get pumped up, ready to play football. Second down and five, and there's Thompson. Struggles ahead for a couple. Will be about a yard short of the first down. Ball resting on the Princeton 10-yard line. Third down. Carter pitches it to Thompson. And he's going to be brought down. As we just saw play that time by Rick Mitchell. Bringing up a fourth down and seven. <laughs> throw the ball and a flag goes down. Pat Frizzell with Mark Sarver and of course good old Mr. Sarver has been around Mercer County for 33 years. He knows this rivalry extremely well. Fourth down and 12 and Thompson wants to throw the ball. He'll look downfield, throws it. He's got Scott at the 20. Scott trying to get out of it, but he's going to be stopped two yards short of the first down. And again, Princeton holds. Charlie Thompson, the quarterback also. Right. <laughs> Princeton on first down. Straight ahead. What Princeton needs to do right here, Pat, is not only put some yardage together on this drive, but they also have to avoid a turnover deep in their own territory. Again, going back to that last Princeton turnover, Ronnie Scott, boy, that would have really tightened things up here. Could have had a tie ball game on our hands. Again, Aaron Self at quarterback. There's Bailey picking up a yard. That'll bring up a third down and three. Following the penalty against Bluefield, Princeton will have it first and 10 there. Scott, and he'll be out across his 36 to the 37. And that should be good enough for another Princeton first down. One minute to play in the third quarter. With Princeton trying to put another drive together, trailing Bluefield 21 to 13. And a pick up a, a couple more on the play as Jeremy Wheeler will carry the football out to the 39. Joe Street injured after the Green Bar East game. According to Coach Simon, that was the fatal blow that could have cost Bluefield a couple games this season. There's Scott down the left side. Inside the 40, still going. Brought down at the Bluefield 26-yard line. And here comes Princeton storming back. Don't go away. High school football game of the week will be right back. Final quarter from Mitchell Stadium. Bluefield leading at 21 to 13. Princeton threatening. Self goes over the middle. Incomplete intended for Thompson. For such a big defense, averaging over 200 pounds on the front line. Scott. Picking up a yard. At that time, Bluefield was in a 5-2 alignment. They did not blitz any of their linebackers. Third down and long. Nine now for the Tigers. And Self for trying to throw it a little mix up in the backfield. And he's going to be sacked. Back at the 34. Scott, the single back. Bluefield, an uh, aggressive rush, and they will sack Aaron Self on fourth down. That was a good defensive series for, for uh, Bluefield. They dodged the bullet right there. Princeton had a very good drive going for them. Pat Frizzell with Mark Sarver on our high school game of the week here on WVBA-TV. And well, we're certainly glad you joined us. We're in the final quarter of play with Princeton trailing Bluefield 21-13 with nine minutes to play. This time, Carter will throw a little out pattern to Thompson. Connects, but he's going to be dropped two yards short of the first down. We got a fourth down, and we will see Mike Shoda, the Bluefield punter. Concord does an excellent job providing an outlet for the local high school players to uh, sometimes have a place to continue their football. Princeton goes for the block, and a flag will go down. A good acting job by Mike Shoda. Ball fielded back at the 21, but it's going to be wiped out. Shota goes down. Uh, it's Rick Mitchell will be guilty of roughing the kicker. 
Certainly not a comfortable lead with eight minutes to play, leading 21 to 13. They need to still try to get something on the scoreboard here, not relax a bit. Carter looks to Floyd Ray. Said he dumps it off to Thompson. He tries to, but the pass is underthrown, incomplete. Now second down and 10 for the Beavers. Carter a mix up in the backfield and he throws the football lateral that time to Ronnie Scott. That could have been a very dangerous play. As the ball was thrown backwards, hit on the ground, but luckily Scott came up with it. Carter with a little option play, a fumble. And it would appear that Princeton may have recovered, but Thompson may have pounced on it. And if so, the Beavers are very lucky. I don't know how he got back on it. There was about five white shirts scrambling for it, but yet Thompson came up with. Back comes Terry. So Terry, who performed well in the first half, back in the game here in the final six minutes of the ball game. Fumble, and Bluefield has recovered at the Princeton 21-yard line. Bluefield with the ball, first and 10 on the Princeton 20-yard line, following the turnover by the Tigers. There's Thompson, not going anywhere. They're well prepared. Very well prepared. In fact, you can tell Coach Joe Trebuco has got his troops ready to play out here. And they have really done a fine job. Give Coach Trebuco a lot of credit there at Princeton, getting his squad ready for a very tough, physical, quick Bluefield team. Ronnie Scott around the left side. And he's not going anywhere as the Princeton defense is there once again to stop Ronnie Scott. Third and nine now for Bluefield. Princeton must stop the Beavers here. Carter throws it, and the pass intended for Ray. And the Beavers will put the ball up in the air. It's thrown over the middle, and it's complete at the five-yard line. First and goal at the five. Bluefield threatening to put this one out of reach. And they give it inside to the fullback, Mike Kelly, touchdown. Bluefield was working out of the power out that time it appeared. And Mike showed his kick is away and right down and the middle. Kick. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Mike Kelly getting into the act, going five yards into the end zone to give Bluefield a 28-13 lead. Right, Pat. Most of the scoring this year by Bluefield has been done by Charlie Thompson and by uh, Ronnie Scott. And so I'm sure Princeton was keen on them on this particular play. Kelly takes the handoff, simply goes off tackle, and uh, does a really, really good job of putting the ball in the end zone. And Todd Bailey back deep for Princeton, back at his eight. And Bailey will have a chance to return this one. He'll take it at the 11. Goes inside with it. He's got some room up the middle, but he'll be brought down at the 33. Well, now it's time for Princeton to start airing it out, I would say. They will come back in with Steve Terry at quarterback. I would think you're right, Pat. You can approach it from uh, two angles. They do have to get two scores right now, and obviously they have to get them pretty quickly. There's only 3.58 left to go in the ball game. Look for some passing and some more passing here in the last four minutes with Princeton trailing it by 15, 28, 13. Terry throws it over the middle, and it's incomplete. 3.40 to play. Terry will go deep with it down the right side. He's got his man. That time, Rick Mitchell, and the pass is complete to the 42. Out of good old Chuck and Look for them there to be right there at season's end also. Terry will throw it, and it's incomplete. Now Greenbrier, he's back to them. They're off to their best start ever. They've never started 7-0. They've never finished 10-0. They've never won a state title. So I know Homer Criddle and company, they've got all it takes, really. They will play uh, Princeton next week, and they may end up chalking up their eighth win of the season there. And if so, they've got Oak Hill, and they close it out with Morgantown. Look for them to be there when the state tourney comes around, and be a top contender, they throw the football. It is complete all the way to the Bluefield 20-yard line as Mark Trail comes up with it. We also have a penalty on the play, Pat. 
I believe the preliminary indication might be roughing the passer against Bluefield, which will add 15 more yards to the play and put Princeton in scoring position. And again, there's a lot of time left in this ball game right now. 3.19 to play. Well, following the roughing the passer call, Princeton will have it first down at the 10. And another flag goes down. Well, the offsides call against Bluefield will give Princeton a first down at the Bluefield 6. Scott will pick up a yard, and that's it. Now, 2.50 to play. Now it's strategy time. They score, let's say. What do they do? I obviously go for two. They'll have to go for two, Pat, I would say. Also, the other thing that we have to keep in mind right now is Princeton has used several of their timeouts already. It's very important. Second down at the five. The Tigers threatening in the closing moments. There's Rodney Scott up the middle. Touchdown, Princeton. Princeton's right back in the ball game, Pat. There's two minutes and 23 seconds left. Let's see what they do on this conversion attempt. Rodney Scott goes up the middle for six, and that will cut it to 28 to 19 with 2.23 to play in the game. Boy, oh boy, it's looked more and more like Bluefield Matthew <laughs> more and more as time goes on. Yeah, we were talking about that at halftime. And they will go for two as Steve Terry drives them the length of the field. And the two-point conversion, they throw it over the middle. The two-point conversion is good. Terry did an excellent job on that uh, drive, as you just mentioned, Pat. He came off the bench cold on his first series after Aaron Self was injured. Um, he had a mishandled snap and fumbled the ball, but on that particular drive, he did a good job. Princeton's right back in the ball game, down by seven points. Well, they had to have that two-point conversion. If they didn't, they would have been down by nine, and then it's they'd have to score twice. So they did exactly what they had to do, cutting it to 28-21 with 2.23 to play. Look for the onside kick as Bluefield will have all their, I'm sure most of their backfield receiving core up on the front line to try to handle it. However, Princeton, a surprise, will kick it away. And Ronnie Scott will come up with it and slip down at the 25. That's poor field position for Bluefield right now. Uh, Princeton, I'm sure what they would hope for right now would be a turnover on, Bluefield, on Bluefield's part. They don't have many timeouts to work with, so they can't afford to let Bluefield right now get a first down, Pat. They've got to stop them right now, force Bluefield to punt the ball. Pat Frizzell with Mark Sarver. And again, we're so glad you joined us here on the high school football game of the week. And we're going to go right down to the wire, just as we did last week in Welch, with Bluefield holding on to a seven-point lead over Princeton. 28-21, 2 18 to play in the game. Bluefield in the maroon jerseys, leading this one. Scott on the carry, he gets a couple. Now Princeton can ill afford to have much time run off the clock here. The official winds it up and says, let it keep rolling. Bluefield has to keep the ball in the field too, Pat. They can't afford to run out of bounds. That was real close right there. They need to keep the ball in the field. And uh, Princeton's called a timeout. Second down and eight. Now for Bluefield, a minute 49 to play. Ronnie Scott around the left side. He'll have the first down plus some. Cross the midfield strike. One thing he did do there, Pat, he got a first down, but he ran out of bounds, which does stop the clock. Gives Bluefield good field position. Uh, but the official is going to mark him out of bounds back at his 48. And now the clock really beginning to pose some problems for Princeton. A minute 41 to play. Let's go back to that last kickoff. Perhaps should they have gone for the onside kick? I'm sure they'll be second guessed for quite some time. And there's the fullback, first man through, Mike Kelly. Yeah, as you mentioned, Pat, 
Princeton had already attempted one onside kick. They had been successful with it. You made the comment that Bluefield had put a lot of their skilled people up front on this particular kickoff. They put their, their uh, players up there with good hands. Possibly a bloop kick might have worked uh, over the top a little bit. Well, you just never know. It's a situation now where Bluefield has the ball with a minute eight left and the clock is ticking away. Ball on the Princeton 49 and a flag goes down. 58 seconds to play following the delay of game call against Bluefield, second down and 12. And Mike Kelly picks up five. Again, stay with us after the game and we will have the winning coach. And at this time, it would appear it will be Fred Simon to get his insight on the Beavers' win. That is, if they can hold on here with 49 seconds to play. Third and six. Princeton hoping to get the ball back just one more time with 45 seconds to play. Thompson will be three yards short of the first down, but Princeton cannot do anything except watch the clock wind down. Clock reads 20 seconds to play. The officials put some more time back up on the clock, an extra 15 seconds. And Bluefield just watching the clock wind down now with eight seconds to play. And there is the delay of game call as the official goes up with a flag with eight seconds to play. And that's the ball game from Mitchell Stadium as the Bluefield Beavers beat Princeton 28 to 21. When we come back, we'll have the head coach of the winning Bluefield Beavers, Fred Simon. Don't go away. High School Football Game of the Week will be right back. And Pat Frizzell back for our post-game show here at Mitchell Stadium with the Bluefield Beavers hold on to beat their rivals, the Princeton Tigers tonight, 28 to 21. And joining us now, the winning coach of the Bluefield Beavers, Fred Simon, along with, of course, our color commentator tonight, Mark Sarver. And coach, you weren't worried a bit, were you? Well, I'll tell you what, Princeton didn't give up their bit, and uh, I don't know if I was worried or not, but I, I felt like that our kids were going to come through, but you know, uh, my hat's off to Princeton again this week. They uh, kept coming right back at us, and uh, our kids kept finding a way to get the ball back themselves, and it's another good football game this week. You know, you've seen Coach Simon, you've seen many of the Bluefield teams, and what, what is your insight as a member of the community, and perhaps what does this do for Coach Simon and his credibility here as a head coach? Well, I think, it, obviously, uh, there was an article this week in the, in the newspaper that um, that indicated that, you know, there were some problems with the football program at Bluefield. And, uh, you know, again, I've seen a lot of Bluefield teams come and go. Uh, Coach Simons is in his third year. I think he's done an excellent job this year. Five and three is not a bad record up to this point. Um, the one thing I would like to ask Coach Simons is, did that have any adverse effect upon not only yourself, but upon your players in preparation for uh, this week's contest? No, we just have to go ahead and uh, no matter what goes on, you know, it's unfortunate things like that happen and, um, you know, parents get involved when their kids are, you know, playing sports, that sort of thing. It's unfortunate, but uh, you have to just go ahead and work hard and, you know, get the program going where you want it to go. And uh, our program's going and our kids are working hard and um, everything's just fine. What do you feel was a turning point in this game tonight, Coach? Is there an area where you thought you guys took control of the game? It seemed like when you, you went up 21-7, you began to, to pick up some momentum at that particular time. Well, we just never could quite get that knockout punch tonight. You know, Princeton, you know, if we could have maybe got something going there a little bit more, just a little bit more, I think we could have got the knockout punch, but uh, uh, they wouldn't let us. And we just kept going back and forth. And, uh, you know, when you get in a battle and keep battling and you finally come up on top, it's just good. It's good to win. And almost like we had another Mountain View on our hands there. I bet Coach <coughs> Tommy was saying, please, not another overtime back-to-back. -back. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't want that. Uh, <laughs> Very cold evening. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he didn't want that at that point, Pat. Coach, any final comments uh, as far as the win? It seemed like more than anything, your team has so much balance in the wishbone attack tonight, something we've seen the Oklahomas and the Air Forces in college football do. And, and you guys, you look like a potential college team the way you ran it out there. I mean, it was it was very well executed. Well, our, I thought Stacy did a good job of uh, executing the offense, and our backs ran hard, and our linemen did a good job. And Princeton at times didn't do a bad job of defending us, and it was a good football game. And um, 
Well, I'm just glad to get over with a victory here again Friday night, and it's uh, it's going to feel good going into Monday, getting ready for a tough Logan team. Going to relax for a change, huh? Take it easy tonight? Yeah, we'll relax just a little bit and then get back to it Monday. Get back to it, and uh, I don't know, maybe Mark can teach me a little tennis over the weekend here, maybe, <laughs> maybe tomorrow for about, ten, about an hour or so. This, this is actually <laughs> Terry Bradshaw. He hasn't told you yet. Does he resemble us? He's Terry. Maybe we can suit him up for us here maybe next year. Your, so. your final comments, Mark. Uh, it was an excellent ball game. Again, I think, uh, you know, we had Bluefield coming into the contest with a 4-3 and three record. Princeton came over with a two and five record you can throw all of that out the window uh, at that point both teams played very well and coach Simon final comments well I'm just just glad to get this one over with with another win and um, kids played good I thought and you know, I thought Princeton came in here good and it's uh, just another victory down the road here and hopefully we can keep going uh, but it won't be easy you know Logan comes in here tough and he's back up there so we've got really two tough games going in, going into the stretch here Mark certainly a pleasure having you on the game of the week appreciate it Pat it's mm -hmm. a pleasure to work keep, with you keep, get to keeping that tennis elbow huh? <laughs> I will <laughs> congratulations well, coach. thank you Pat reminding you once again our final score tonight from Mitchell Stadium the Bluefield Beavers beat their rivals in the Battle of Mercer County the Princeton Tigers 28 to 21 Join us next week when we take a look at college football. We head out to Athens as Concord. We'll meet Glenville State, the first college football telecast ever at WVVA. So for Coach Simon and uh, Mr. Sarver over here, I'm Pat Frizzell saying so long from Mitchell Stadium. This has been the high school football game of the week. Brought to you in part by Rainy Chevrolet. We're steering you straight. By Hardy's Restaurants, where we're out to win you over. And by Mullins Ford, your four-wheel drive headquarters in Richland, Virginia. It's wild, it's crazy.